study the scriptures and revelation come if we don't come to the point where the revelations become a component part of our existence where we have not experimentally entered into the realities it will become frustrating imagine me coming to a point in my life and i read the bible and he said by his stripes you are healed and i believe many of you have read it here i continue quoting it quoting it quoting it and ended up in hospital now two things are involved is either the bible is true or there is something i'm not doing well so and the bible has already said let every man be a liar and let the god be the only truthful one so humility the bible said coming to the meekness with meekness to the engrafted one that is able to build us up one of the hard postures that a man need to retain if we will be able to receive from the bounties that comes from the scripture is that you will have a heart of humility the heart of meekness such that as long as god is the one that is communicating there must be something he wants to tell me that is missing in my life so no matter how much this man has heard when god begins to speak they, they bend down because if it was working god wouldn't still be emphasizing on those matters and god is not just interested in giving you information the bible said paul was the one speaking he said ye are living epistles if you're with me say amen. amen what it means to be a living epistle is that the word that is in the letters of the scripture has become an embodiment of a man so when you live in a day people don't need to ask is this possible your life has trapped and calcified that dimension so Paul was the one speaking he said that the church is the ground and pillar of truth there is something I studied in sciences in the university maintain your sound maintain your sound pay attention it is called how calcium carbonate forms in mountains or rather um, what is it called caves like stalagmites they come down as liquid but by the time they encounter the pressure and temperature and atmosphere within the cave they will solidify so when the bible said that the church is the ground and pillar of truth the scripture is trying to say that there are multifaceted dimensions of god that people hear about but they have never seen it manifest the duty of the church so when we ask where is holiness then somebody will stand out of the church without saying anything he has become an embodiment of the truth of god called holiness so people don't need to say where is this how can we do this all they need to do is to touch you sir once they touch you they have touched that dimension of god when they touch you they have touched power when they touch you they have touched prayer when they touch you they, they must have touched something in god that is how God ordained it. So men walking in the streets and their embodiments of the multifaceted dimension of God. That is why the Bible says, Know ye not that they are the temple of the Holy Ghost, meaning that we will be house and carriers of divine essence. Oh my God. So when you step out, you don't need to tell people, I'm like this, I'm this one. Your life will be a carrier of the same thing. God will do something to you today when you are living you will not tell people they, they no something will begin to manifest as a testimony to the fact that you encounter the one it was moses that said when you send me whom shall i tell them that send me he said i'm not sending you in vain i'm sending you with a rod so is in vain you are doubting a man that came and divided the resi in case you don't believe that god sent him how did the resi divide he must have encountered a man so when he was going back to egypt god told him and said i'm not just going to make you a prophet i'm going to make you a god to pharaoh so when moses arrived in egypt he didn't arrive as a prophet he arrived as a god so god will make you into something the things and people you are afraid of will begin to run away from you satan is not that powerful my friends <laughs> the only thing is that people has failed to do their duty the target of Satan is to make us to fail in our duty and make God look as if he's weak. God is not weak. The only thing is that man has failed to stand in the place of power in the spirit. And then we begin to rise in rank. And it doesn't matter how you are in the natural. 
it doesn't matter how disadvantaged you are and that is why i chose this scripture when a man begins to give himself to prayer and priesthood he begins to rise in the spirit begins to rise begins to rise begins to rise when you do anything for or against that man he can only help him if you do anything against him it will still help him if you put joseph in prison it is in that prison that he will now end up in palace if you arrest him and sell him to slave you are pushing him faster to his destiny you can't do anything against the man that god has decided to raise up to help to deliver <laughs> if we can only do our duty on our knees huh? I went and told somebody can you pray for three hours I asked the person can you pray for six hours the person said what will you be praying for for six hours that's when I found out that this person doesn't know how how men gain rank in the spirit They don't know how men rise in rank. It is not just that something happened for you. You become an embodiment of that reality. They, you have gained rank in the spirit. There is a way you cast out devils or deal with demonic issues. Many of those demons will know you in the spirit. When, after some season, when you encounter the same thing, you will expend less energy to deal with it. It means you have gained rank in the spirit. And your fame has gone ahead. In the kingdom of darkness so when you appear they will say this is the one that destroyed us here destroyed us here let's start running on time you don't know how men gain rank in the spirit <laughs> when you appear they say we know this man when he came to the village he destroyed, he dealt with us let's start running on time i hope you know that satan can suffer damage there are some people that use one million to do charm and you come and shook their hands and the charm died are you getting the point it means that anytime you shake them one million will leave their pocket so they will avoid shaking you. <laughs> they will avoid shaking you because anytime they tempt you there is damage done to set damage serious damage i believe that god will send you back to do damage to Satan. in the name of jesus damage 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 for this reason the son of God was made manifest that he will destroy the works of darkness that he will destroy that he will destroy that he will destroy <laughs> amen the Bible said for that Jesus gave this parable to this wise you know Luke chapter 18 verse 1 the Bible said for men ought always to pray that Jesus gave this parable to this wise it means that the purpose of the parable is to teach something so there is a teaching in the heart of Jesus. Now, one of the things you will, you will find out in the New Testament and especially the Gospels is that Jesus was operating in the days that he had his disciples. Before the advent of the Holy Spirit, the impact of his Gospel was from outside in. The anointing that teacheth men has not been installed on their inside. If you are with me, say amen. amen. There is an anointing that teaches men. And it is not yet on their inside so jesus have to use physical things to exemplify spiritual realities for example he was going to a place and he saw a fig tree that looks as if is rich and then there is no fruit on it and he cost it and he died he didn't say anything meanwhile he has a teaching but when they were coming back peter said the fig tree you cost has dried up and jesus said be if you have faith that means he wanted to teach them about faith but he waits for a physical location so that he will use it as an avenue to begin to teach them and many times god also uses that kind of method to administer his teachings and education to men now i need to tell you something god knows that a man doesn't truly really know a thing until he has been brought into experiment and that is why when we went to school there are theories and there are people that can get 90 but when they enter the lab the same thing you know you will find out that it's different that means you have not truly really known the matter until you are brought through the waters that teaches men how to do this now for example a man came and his child became sick 
And God told him that I will show my name worthy over this child. What he noticed is that even though God says such a word, if you are with me, say amen. amen. Even though God says such a word, things began to deteriorate. Go down, go down. And he began to wonder, is it true that God really said this? Meanwhile, God said it. But for you to know what God said, it is not that hearing. When God speaks, you have to be educated in what God said. Because you will think that you heard. Until you will leave, you will find out that the broadcast of God is not to your mind. It is not cognitive. Now, the problem is that in these days, we have many believers that has expanded their cognitive capacity in spiritual things. And it is, um, it is a crisis of faith when a man comes to the point where he knows a lot and there is little proof in his life. If you are with me, say amen. It's a crisis of faith because such a man will think that his cognitive ability in the scriptures on the things that pertains to God um, directly translates to spiritual experiences and capacity in God. Only for him to find out that there is a different education that comes to a man that decides to learn of the things of the spirit. So that school that brings men into teachings and educations of God is what is called the school of the spirit. There is no man that can teach that. Oh my God, the Bible was speaking, it was Jesus saying, he said, when he, the spirit of truth is come, he will lead you into all truth. He will take of mine and give it to you. It will mean that there is no capacity for a man to enter into the administration of truth without the ministry of the Holy Ghost. As he takes of the things that is of Christ and ministers thoughts to you. So such a man will think that just because he knows he is working in it, only for him to find out 10 years later that he doesn't know it. I prayed for almost 10 years of my life. Gave myself, not praying, to prayer ministry. And then God called me one January and said, come. He said, Chedu, come, let me teach you prayer. I said, what have I been doing? You are not with me. Say after me, what have I been doing? You will think what I said doesn't apply to you until you find out that every man of God that God used mightily faced that in his life. Kenneth Hagin said that one day God called him and said, come. Let me show you, your ministry began. He told God, what have I been doing all these years? Hmm? Isaiah was prophesying until we come to chapter 6. And when he had the encounter with the seraphim, the real dimension of his ministry, all those things he's doing is not his mentor. The real dimension of his ministry is waiting for a throne room encounter. Oh my God! When he had the throne room encounter, he encountered the purging flames and he became his encounter let me tell you something one of the proofs that your encounter is genuine and your work with god is genuine is that when you speak about the things you encounter the witness will come so men like jim men like john and peter we say what our eyes have seen our hands have handled he said this one no be story Peter said, we have not believed cunningly devised fables. This one, we touched it. We became it. We touched and became. So, one of the things you will notice here is that Jesus has a communication incapacitation. He, his communica he has a fracture in his ability to communicate what is in his heart. I need you to know that one of the major problems that Jesus encountered in his ministry, ministry upon the face of the earth is the challenge of communicating the burden that is in his heart. And because of that, he took up a, a method, the method of parables. If you help me, say amen. amen. The reason why Jesus took up the method of parables is, such, is so that it will allow him the opportunity to smuggle in a spiritual thing through the means of parables. So parables will only come about when there is an experience in your life that mirrors something that God wants to teach you about. God wants to teach you something, but he waits for something to happen. Then he will smuggle an education in it such that when you yield to the process of the school of the spirit, you will come out from that experience knowing something. This knowing now, <laughs> this knowing is not in your head. Huh? This knowing is the knowing in the spirit, the knowing in the heart. 
It is an education. It is furnished by the Spirit of God. As a matter of fact, you can read a book and you will hear something you don't know it. Until you are passed through an experience, you will now know it. For example, I was teaching some people about the gates of time and time gates. If you have been an intercessor for long, one of the things that God would have taught you without even reading any book is that there is such a thing as time gates. Even the Bible taught us about it. If you have me, say amen. Oh. Somebody came and told me, he said, that if I pray any time, it doesn't mean any time of the any time you pray, whether in the day or in the night, that they are the same. You see, that person has not been taught. Even if he has knowledge, it's in the head. Because when you go and visit the mama, your mama in your village, you are in Lagos and you are saying that when you visit your mama in the village that has been praying for you for 25, 30 years, she will tell you, I normally wake up by one. That when you wake up that by one, that there is a spirit that normally passes through this compound by one. If you help me, say amen, oh. But you say, I can pray anytime, I can pray anytime. But the gate for such an encounter to bring down the principality that is holding you down is within a time frame. So if your engagement will be strategic and effective, then you have to wake up by one. So the man that is waking up by any other time, well, they, it will be useful for other things. But you will notice that particular issue you have been waiting for God to turn around is still persisting because there is no strategy. <laughs> there is what we call strategic prayers. <laughs> If you are with me so far, say amen. Oh. Yeah. I was told to speak on the altar of prayer. I think, I'm not saying I know much about prayer, but I've known a little, and I've prayed a little to have an opinion. And the things I'm teaching you is practicable. I mean, it's not, I'm not just giving you knowledge. I'm telling you, I'm giving you wisdom. Beyond knowledge, I'm giving you wisdom. Something, you, as I'm speaking, you can even identify with it. If you are with me, say amen. Yeah. Now listen. The mama will come and tell you is 1 a.m. in the night. Are you getting the point now? It means that that is the time gate that allows for the possibilities of such an engagement that you have. The Bible will say a great while before day, Jesus will rise up and pray. I say, why did Jesus choose Naivijil more than praying in the day? Have you checked? If you check the prayer life of Jesus, you will find out he prayed more... <laughs> He prayed more in the night than in the day. Because the day is time for manifestation. How can you come in the time of manifestation and you are still preparing? No, you are late. You are late. You are late. When people are supposed to be manifesting, you are still cooking. Command your day. If you will command the day, you will do it in the night. I cannot come and be bound with what people are doing in the day. Men that rule the day, they wake up in the night. Even if it's 15 minutes God gave you, keep it. The real power is in consistency. Not just in how many hours, but in every night, 30 minutes, you wake up. Every night, one hour. Eh? You wake up and vata kupa. Even if you don't have prayer point in the beginning, tongues is, is a language that, that spirits understand. Have God complained that you are praying too much in tongues? You will never hear God complain that you are praying too much. <laughs> have you not noticed? If there is one thing God is not tired of, he's hearing your prayer. If anybody will be tired, it's human beings that are tired of praying. God is not tired of hearing and answering prayer. Huh? The more you pray, the more answers. If you have gotten all your answers, you get for other people. There are people that are working answers. For example, mama sitting here, administering blessings and possibilities for you. She's an answer to your prayer. So that means she's carrying answers. If you want to carry answers for your generation, you have to pray more than you need as a person. And Jesus gave a parable to this end. That, number one, 
men ought always to pray. <laughs> I came to a meeting, not one meeting, many meetings. And I came and asked a man. I read this scripture and I asked the man, according to this scripture, are you a man? Listen to me. I know there are many elderly men here, so please, pardon me. Pardon me. But I will still say what God put in my mouth. But pardon me in Jesus' name. I asked the person, are you a man? He said, yes. I said, I prove it. He said, can't you see? So by his trousers and the way he is a man. <laughs> I told him, according to Jesus, men are, men are being identified in the place of prayer. The identity of your destiny will never come out until you begin to groan and travel and pray. And in case you think this Bible is talking about gender, this place is talking about gender. It's not. Because when he began to explain what he wanted, he said, a certain woman. Are you with me? He said, men ought always to pray. And then he said, a woman. Meaning that this prayer thing is not gender, gender sensitive. <laughs> I've spoken to you that some people are shocked now. <laughs> it's not gender sensitive. So a man can rise in prayer. Do you know that the apostles of Jesus were, John and Peter, they were busy resting on his shoulder. John said, I'm the one that you love and all that. They didn't know Jesus. So. Until one day Jesus called them and said, come, let's go up to the mountain and pray. The Bible said, when Jesus prayed and traveled, the fashion of his countenance was what? Altered. Then that is when we saw that the one we are calling our brother and eating with him, and I call him, if you see the person, say, my guy, my guy. You even want to knock his head. When the person prays, his real identity will be unveiled. You, you that used to think you are mates, we find out that you are, you are a babe, and this guy is a giant in the spirit. But you will never find out such thing until you pray. Then the mortal identity of the person of Jesus was unveiled. We don't know you yet. You see, people can come and look at you and summarize you and say you are small, you are this, you are that, you are that. For example, when I entered first year in the university, they were acting drama, drama. And you know, if we are acting drama, normally we use somebody that is very dark in complexion to act certain. Is it not true? How many of you have been in drama classes or you have been around? You use somebody very dark in complexion to act certain. Only for them to call me to act Satan. I'm not that dark. But Satan is trying to tell me to become what I am not. And I will not lie to you. That thing affected my mind. Huh? There are many people that are what they are not. Simply because they have refused to pray. When you begin to pray, you will find out you are not weak. All the time you are complaining, moving from one person. It's because you refuse to pray. Use that time you are using to complain. Take out three hours every day. Eh? Pray. Eh? Add six to six fasting. Do it. Anyway, some people, I ask somebody, have you fasted? Have you? I told him, have you fasted? He said he fasted. I said, okay, how, how much do you fast? He said six to 12. Six to 12 p.m. Is that one fasting? You just forgot to eat in the morning. <laughs> Somebody just forgot to eat and he called it fasting. Oh, you are saying you are fasting. Ah, uh, uh, that one is no, you just forgot to eat. Where I'm coming from, they do a lot of business there. And many people live on time. Sometimes they forget to eat. Before they remember, they open their store, do many things, set up their business. It's already one in the afternoon. That's when they eat. So, and you are saying six to twelve is fasting. No, it's not. You are just charging. No, now. No. Just push it to three or six so we manage it. There is a reason why you have to do that. It has to be sacrifice. So after me, sacrifice. You can't come to an altar without a sacrifice and expect a response. <laughs> if you come to an altar without a sacrifice, how do you want to command the power of the altar without a sacrifice? If you are just praying conveniently, you are not willing to command the power of the altar. If you are just fasting conveniently, you are not willing to command the power of the altar. You must be willing to do something that is a sacrifice to you. If you are with me, say amen. Oh. Yeah. 
When I was doing youth service, I didn't know. I didn't know. God told me to do night vigil. Continue doing. I thought it was one month. And then he will achieve what he wanted. I did it for one month. He didn't answer. Two months. Three months. Whether I'm sick. Whether I'm tired. Whether I've eaten. Whether I'm angry. Whether I'm happy. Whether I'm sad. Three months. Four months. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. At the end of eight months, God came and spoke to me and said, that what bound your father will not bind you. What limited him will not limit you. I looked at myself and said, did anything bind my father? No, you will not know that there are things limiting people in your family and is willing to stop you until you go deep. This kind of prayer you are praying, Satan has not taken you serious yet. I'm not saying God, Satan has not taken you serious. There is a way you pray. Certain demons in your family will encounter you in your dream. It happened to some of us. While we were praying normal prayer, nothing happened. But when we went deep in prayer, they rose. It seemed as if things started getting bad when we were praying more. Am I the only one it has happened? Uh -huh. That is because Satan has started taking you serious. You have started doing what can dislodge and destroy his works. If you are doing 30 minutes and Satan did that, add 30 more minutes. Make it one hour. That means you have struck chord in the spirit. You have started doing something that have the capacity to change something. If you have me so far, say amen. I never knew that there are things installed in my family until I began to pray. Especially if you are a pastor. There are more limitations and curses holding pastors than the people that are pastoring and found out. The reason why I'm saying this is that my father is a pastor. So you need to know that for 30 something years now I have seen, if not if I didn't see spiritually at least I can see physically I have seen it the anointing is fundamentally crafted by God to be unselfish are you getting it now? it means that I can be sick and pray for you you will be healed if you ask every person that has been used by God he will tell you the same thing that you can pray for somebody, he will be healed. You will go back, you will need to take drug. If you don't have faith for yourself, there are only two ways to be healed, <laughs> supernaturally. It's either somebody with his own anointing prays for you, or the Bible says that the just shall live by his own faith. So I went for a meeting and power broke out. All kinds of healing was happening. I almost fainted. They have to carry me back. That's when I realized, are you with me? That if you are a man of God, you need to dig a well of encounter that have the capacity to sustain your spiritual experiences. If not, there are things you will do eh, as a result of the damage and the anointing that is manifest. Satan will come for you. I went to Otoke, Bayasa State, for a crusade. When I went there, at some point, I told them, shout fire seven times. They shouted, fire, fire, fire. And then deliverance, all kinds of things began to happen. If you're with me, say amen. Oh. amen. When it began to happen, I wanted to deliver one of the ladies. As I came close to her, she now, the demon, of course, not her. The demon began to speak. She said, we know you. I said, uh -uh. know me well. This is the first time I'm coming to Bayasa. Talk more for Otoke. And he said he know me. That they have been waiting for me. You are the only one casual with your life. Satan is more ready than you. You are, you are not serious. When you are serious, you begin to pray. Eh? You are casual about your life. Meanwhile, meanwhile, Satan has taken you so serious that they said they know your name and they have kept monitoring your progress up and down. A young man was part of my prayer team many years ago. And the young man came and said that when we were praying, prayed for some months. The young man said, that they send her him message from home. Are you getting the point now? They send him message from home, and one of the uncles asked and said, "Okay, Chuku, where are you?" Uh -uh. They were asking his parents, and the parents told the uncle and said, "Okay, Chuku is doing youth service." The uncle now said, "Ask Okay, Chuku where he is." He said he's doing youth service. So, 
They went and asked him, but where is he? He said, I'm, I'm at Ogun State. I'm doing you service. They went and told the man, he said, ask Okechuku, where are you? When the young man came and told me, I said, your parents are spiritually unintelligent. You need spiritual intelligence to understand what these men are talking about. It means you are no more in their radar. Huh? When, when they call you forth, they can no more send text message. Because this is how Satan was. He doesn't need to. You, you are, your data is already in their data bank. Huh? So what they do is that they, so they have removed him from the data bank. So when they check him, they are no more seeing him. They say, where are you? So you are not, I hope you know, you can be like this, physically available in the church. And especially if you are a sister, we have seen it. A sister will be everywhere, singing, praying, in everywhere, well-dressed, fine and beautiful. Yes, nobody will see her because there is a covering cast. So just because you are available physically doesn't mean that anybody is seeing you. <laughs> Meanwhile, another sister will be hiding at the back, you know, she will just come and seven people will say they want to marry it will mean that physically this person is shown but in the spirit she is hidden physically this person seems as if he's hiding but in the spirit is open are you hearing me if you have me say amen. amen men are powerful in the spirit not in the natural and if you will be powerful you need to revive your altar of prayer altar of prayer there are some of you, you used to pray well. I met an elderly person. And the person told me that, hi, those days that they used to pray, they used to pray. I can't say anything to him because he's an elder. So I said, okay, if you used to pray and you can't pray now, no problem. But unfortunately, <laughs> destiny does not record that you are old. If there are things you have left undone, <laughs> if there are things that you have left undone, you have left an inheritance for your children. Now, every father leaves an inheritance. You are, you are not getting my point. So, every father leaves an inheritance. It's not just money. It's not just good things. You can leave an inheritance of warfare for your children. You can leave an inheritance of untreated matters for your children. You know. You know you are the one God called to deal with this. You run away. Now, you are seeing the signs in your children. It's because you refuse to fight your own warfare. Even if that's the only thing you did in your lifetime, why not use the remaining 30 to 40 years and clear the way for your children? Somebody with small children will start suffering before they have become anything in life. Things that they don't know about. Huh? It's because you left your duty post. Your altar of prayer, there is ashes there. Meanwhile, it's fire that should be there. The Bible said that this is the law of the burnt offering. Leviticus chapter 6 verse 9. He said, it is the law of the burnt offering because the fire shall be burning there all night till the morning. It will not go off. No fire on your altar, you don't have a prayer life. The proof of prayer life is fire. Say after me, fire. I didn't hear you. Say after me, fire. You need fire. Oh. Mama, you need fire. Fire is not age sensitive. If you have fire, you have fire. If you are young, you need fire. If you are old, you need fire. Prayer ascends by fire. Have you seen an incense that is not put? Where will the smoke come from? Where will it go up? There are people that are praying, you know, they are praying, but there is no fire in their prayer. So it's not ascending fast. Breeze will come and scatter your prayer. When you finish, one small thing will happen and your prayer will be scattered. But there are men that cook prayer. You know? Originally, I'm not a teacher and a preacher. I'm a prayer person. You know the way, <laughs> the way you breathe, the way your inside is made up for breathing. That's where some of us pray. If, if I'm discussing with you, I'm still praying. If we stop, I'll be praying. Because prayer is my calling. Not just to have results, it's, it's my calling. I'm called to draw a generation to prayer because God has found that if his agenda will prosper, then people need to pray. Do you know what the Bible said? That Jesus ever lived to make intercession for us. I thought he is now, he doesn't need to do anything now, but he's still in the intercessory ministry. 
The Bible said, for we know not how we should pray, but the Holy Ghost helped us. The Holy Spirit involved in prayer, Jesus involved in prayer, you are the only one not involved. <laughs> The reason why they are involved is because that's the only vehicle that can make for the achievement of the purpose of God. It so happens that God will not achieve his purpose without your partnership. So the Holy Spirit helps us. He will not do it alone. He helps us. We will not do it alone. He helps us. If you help me, say amen. amen. The Bible said when they took Peter that the Disciples and apostles made prayer. Sometimes me made prayer. There are certain issues in your life. The reason why it's persisting is because you don't know how to make prayer. Now, now, there is a difference for, between praying and making prayer. Making prayer is a complex work of apothecary. It's, it's concussion. <laughs> it's concussion. You know, make, whenever you hear make or made, it alludes to a process. It alludes to a manufacturing process. That means they were there making prayer. They are not interested in how much time, how long. No. They are interested in making something. So they are making prayer. Some people are praying, but they don't know how to make the prayer. When they were through with, oh my God. God will teach somebody today in the name of Jesus. God will teach you. He will teach your hands to war and your fingers to battle. He will teach your hands to war and your fingers for battle. He will teach your hands to war and your fingers for battle. Yes, he will teach you. Because as I'm saying this, there is an anointing that came. Because God also raised us as warriors. Forget the way I'm wearing this suit. It's to make me presentable. <laughs> No, in the <laughs> in the spirit, I'm a, I'm a brutal person. Woo! Some people came and told me, "You smile, you smile." I said, "The reason why God gave me smile physically is because I don't smile in the spirit. I don't smile. I don't have time to smile. There is too much to do for me to be smiling in the spirit." Huh? I have found out in this life. Say, Things don't move because of your good face or the way you dress. If you don't know how to be brutal, eh? Eh, Satan likes to deal with you as you are beautiful and handsome so that they will point out, look at that beautiful girl. Hey, yeah. Satan likes that. Hmm? He likes to deal with you as a man of God. They say, look at that man of God. Hey, we thought, we thought hey, he has served God. Look at how he has been following God for 40 years. Nothing to show. Anybody here under the siege of Satan, I prophesy by the apostolic unction upon my life. I command that those gates blast open in the name of Jesus. I come by the spirit of might. The Bible said that it was something. Give me that sound. Something took the gate of Gaza at his back. And took it to the mountains. Normally you bring down gates from the mountain, but by the spirit of might. Parasakabai, Ferekapalia, Ampetala Bahasate, Satapalia, Fekaya, Sayapata, Siakapela, Falata. I release the ministry of warrior angels. They will visit your family today. I command the boss of fire to shatter. 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 In the name of Jesus. Something is happening now. Please pray for one minute. Something is happening. Something is happening. Take delivery for yourself. For your own self. Minister it in your own context. Minister it in your own context. Please pray. 
The reason why some of us come is to help to make available and possible certain things that are not usual to you. is making his words in your mouth like hammer, like hammer, like hammer to break in pieces to shatter, to break in pieces to shatter, to shatter to shatter, to shatter my God, my God I ask There is a mama that needs to pray. Your daughters need to marry. You can secure it here at this altar. Shapariaka, patapela kama, apeta, apeta, shakata. Every power, every limitation, every gate. Lift up your hands. Oh, ye gates. Lift up your hands. Shibatapa. Can I get a praying people? Something will shift, something will happen. Oh my God, Apante Caparia, Sabra Capatampella, I Capenampella. If only you can pray, somebody pray, Aperia Campo, Sabra Capatania Capa, Essen Dos, Essen Pass, the Abin Tonasota, the Abin Cotasota. Oh my God. Sambela, Ia Catatania, Pante Pante, Asota Panacate, Ia Pana, Ia Pana, we come in the name of Jesus, oh my God, a Patetete, Ipana Capala, Saya, a Pante, Saya, a Pante, Saya, a Pateta Capolia, Manta. Amen. 
man of fire, the man of power. You are Yahweh. Hey, you are Yahweh. You are Yahweh. Alpha. You Omega. <laughs> you are Yahweh. Except you are not a man. The Bible said, For men ought always to pray. If you are a man, you must pray. And it's not just that you will pray, you ought always to pray and not to faint. If you cross reference this scripture about fainting, what we find is in the book of Isaiah, chapter 40, when the Bible said, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. First of all, the Bible said that the youth shall utterly fall. I said, I don't understand. The glory of the youth is his strength. But the Bible gave a verdict. It is not, you know, human beings can give probability and statistical analysis. But when God comes, he gives a verdict. It means that this is the opinion of the holy ones and watchers in heaven. After many seasons and generations of tracing the makeup of men they gave a verdict and said that even the youth shall utterly fall but they that wait upon the Lord they shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings as eagles they shall run they will never faint and they shall walk they will not be weary they that wait upon the Lord there is a renewal that comes when a man decides to stay with God what happens to you there is that you give him your weakness and take his strength when a man has really waited on god the things that is your weakness as a man challenges as a man is expunged at the altar of waiting and then the strength that is not yours naturally will come upon you there is a clothing that comes upon a man that has given himself to the ministry of waiting it is from that altar that may god can send men forth the bible spoke in the book of acts chapter 13 he said at antioch we are certain men that we are waiting on god he said lucius of of Armanian spoke about Saul. spoke about many of them about barnabas he said many of them were teachers and prophets but when they waited and ministered on god the holy ghost came the holy ghost comes upon them that have learned how to stay in the place of prayer place of prayer prayer and fasting altar like this. there is no other way <laughs> oh my god one time i told god use me lord why won't you use me why won't you do something powerful in my life he told me okay go and fast i went to fast i was in campus 400 level december i went to fast five days fasting i've never fasted more than six to six in my life before that time five days straight dry after the second day i thought i would die 
but my desire to see God break forth of my life is stronger than my appetite for food. Let me tell you, if you continue liking food the way you like, I'm not saying don't eat, but the way you like food, you can't make progress spiritually. You can't make progress this way you like food. The way you like sleep, you sleep by 10 and wake up by 6. <laughs> you can't make progress with your love for food and sleep. I'm not saying you don't eat or you don't sleep, but there are necessities for men that have where they are going. You just take the one you need eh? and then leave the rest. There is job to do. There is job. There is job to do. So when God told me, and I like food, I'm telling you, if there is somebody that I like food, forget somebody said I'm slim. No, it's sometimes it's slim people that eat more. So I like food so much that when I was small, I used to cry for food. So when God, I finished that five days fasting, I told God, I'm here now. Where is the oil? Where is your oil? I'm coming down from five days on the mountain. God told me, okay, good. That what you have received now for fasting for five days is the grace to fast. You did not hear me. You fasted for five days. And instead of answer to your prayer, what you think is your answer, what you received is the grace to fast. It was years later God taught me that it is in praying that you receive more grace to pray. Somebody is saying that I want to pray more than you have to be consistent in 15 minutes. That's how you enter 30. That's how you enter one hour. That's how you enter two. That's how you enter three. It is in praying you receive more grace to pray. It is in Bible study you receive more grace to study. It is in fasting you receive more grace to fast. You don't want to open your Bible. You are joking. Nothing will come. So, when I now finish the following year, God told me, oh, I start fasting. So, that five days I went on the mountain. I started giving four to five days every month. Four to five days every month. I did it first month, second month, third month, fifth. Nothing happened. Sixth, Satan came and told me, look at you. You are, you are only heard this remaining. Go to church, you will see what they will tell you. If you go to church, they will tell you, are you sick? Eat something, eat something. Huh? Eat something. When I fasted for the seventh month, a pastor started joining me in that fasting. When the, my fellow young pastor will come, he comes, he came the first time and said, man of God, as we they pray like, like this, God, they look us from heaven, we go blow. Meanwhile, me, I'm looking for God. He's saying we go blow. There is no air to even blow the balloon. And he's saying he will blow. The next time he was coming, he told me that, actually, granite is not sin. That if you eat granite, you are still fasting. <laughs> Many of you, you have that kind of thing. The day you decide to fast, your wife will cook by 6 a.m. The days you don't want to fast, by nine, no food. They will still be running around. Decide to fast on Monday. You will see what I'm telling you. I'm telling you. It's Satan that is manipulating those things. Using natural elements to keep you back. You will cook the one you like the most. Roasted, fried, toasted. Roasted, fried, toasted. Open the window, the kitchen door. You will still be on your sleep in the bed and you will be hearing the smell. You will break your fast before you have started. <laughs> it happened to me. So I'm not saying this because I'm better than you. I'm saying it that the Holy Ghost can help a man rise beyond the weaknesses of his humanity and begin to interface with the powers that are immortal. A day we come, people will look at you and ask you, are you a human being? People have seen the way I pray and fast. They ask me, are you... Are you still normal? Are you still a human being? I was. The reason why God allows us to come from down to up is so that people will know that it is man that the immortal one is walking through. That when the immortality of God leaves our, our members, we will become like others. And number two, so that men can learn that the same possibilities is within their scope. If only they can yield to what it takes. If you are with me, say amen. The guy came next time and brought garden egg. 
he ate the garden egg and said there is nothing in it he came another time and brought biscuit we ate biscuit so he came when I knew there was fire on the mountain it was when he came the fourth time and brought bread so after me bread I ran away from the place I was fasting these are all traps of Satan to make me to give up on that adventure I continued the ninth month 10th 11th 12th Satan said you have done one year is enough I said am I stopping I have not seen results there are many people that quickly give up sometimes you are almost there you give up are you stopping what other plan do you have if Jesus is your only plan instead of stop, stopping you increase what you are doing some people quickly say that I have prayed I've done things nothing is happening do you know how long it took Satan to institute the darkness that is bedeviling men bedeviling your your family do you know how long how long I heard a story of a man of God that came and he prayed and said I take charge of my family I bind all the powers I sack you in the name of Jesus so in the night the demons of the family paid him a visit they said who did you sack so what he said is that he saw two dogs you know dogs dogs a smaller dog and a very big dog can you hear me can you see me so the smaller dog is is here blocking the dog then the bigger dog is somewhere along the way so when he saw the smaller dog on his path he just came and said what are you doing this dog, come, come out of my way and he raised his leg to kick the dog in the dream of his leg hung and his hands hung and the demon told him do you know how long i have stayed in this family small boy like you just rose up and you, you did not do anything you are trying to sack us he said i've been here since the day of your great grandfather now now follow me this is the small dog we are still about to meet the big one so this is why people pray that this is their shelter's prayer you know you know shelter's prayer now plus jesus minus satan plus jesus minus satan is not what it takes to change the hand of darkness the powers of the new creation life has been given to you but it will remain in potential capacities until a man gives himself to priesthood it is priesthood that confers kinetic possibilities to the powers of our new creation possibilities so if not the bible said the god sent his word and his word healed and delivered listen to me now it means that it is the word that is sent that heals and delivers the word that is not sent doesn't do anything if you are say amen oh it means that the word has been charged and sent it is it has gained kinetic abilities the Bible said man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds proceeds not just is the one that left the one the proceeding word of God is what we live by not just the letters not just that God said no it has to gain kinetics and I need to tell you that different dimensions of the truth of the word of God dwells at different energy plane in the spirit I just hope you understand what I'm saying God does not tell you everything at the same level if you grow higher God will begin to tell you certain things and there are certain things God told you you thought you had when you grow higher you God told John when he was in the Isle of Patmos John said I was in the spirit on the Lord's day listen to me John is in the spirit so he's not a man that is not conversant with the realm of the spirit are you with me are you with me John is conversant with the realm of the spirit but the Bible said John said I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and I heard a voice tell me what come up here down. I don't understand you are already a practitioner in the realm of the spirit and in the things of God yet you heard a voice that told you come up here it means that the broadcast of God that he takes to power the new level the new realm 
and possibilities you have entered into cannot be trapped at this your energy level so god told you what come up here so for such a man it is in vain you are asking god to do what he wants you want him to do at this level the answer to your prayer is not the prayer it is just growing large in the spirit Amen. It's growing large in the spirit. Please. This is even more important that you know than you know. A businessman came in the spirit. You know, business open doors in the prophetic is represented with keys for you. Keys. God will give you keys for business. So keys we are handed over to the young man. He went to his business place and then the occultic people there collected the key. Went to a skyscraper and kept it. He has key, but it was collected from him. What was his problem? My brother, the one on eyeglasses. What was his problem? Huh? No, wear your eyeglasses. What was the, this guy's problem? They have given him key to go and prosper. What was his, and they collected it. What was his problem? He doesn't have the capacity to sustain this level of open door. And many times, because God knows that if he opens this kind of door for you, it will even kill you. So he will delay it. So the answer that you need is not to pray for that thing. It must happen. No, it's for you to enlarge, enlarge. When you enlarge, it becomes natural for you to enter that realm of oppression. Are you getting the point now? So that is why God is telling you, come up here, increase your prayer life for your own good. For your own good, even as a minister of the gospel, so, sometimes the worst things that can happen to you is for you to be anointed. David was normal until he was anointed. When he became anointed, the Bible said, and the Philistines heard it. So he was normal as long as he was not anointed. As long as the anointing touched his head then the philistines said it and begin to look for him so the philistines will not look for a man of god until an anointing comes on your life the anointing is your is the challenge and that's why many times before god anoints he it's not as if he can anoint you now but he wants to increase your capacity to carry that new level if you have me say amen so after the fasting i had an encounter I will not give you the details of the encounter but one thing became obvious it became obvious that god is interested in my life in a unique way because the encounter i had was a, a mighty one i became a different person the emphasis of god after that time became priesthood meanwhile as a person i pray well oh, i pray well i fast well uh, but not this kind of prayer I began to pray after that time. Sometimes I will go and lock myself up. There is a church somewhere. I will lock myself and pray for morning till night without prayer point. If I'm coming back from that prayer room, it will seem as if I'm coming with an entourage. The presence and power of God will follow me. I don't have pulpit, I don't have church, I don't have ministry. But I was cooking myself for years. For years. God called me, said, I'm teaching you the path of the presence. How to carry the presence. Because that time I noticed that even if I'm anointed, if I'm ministering, ministering, the anointing will finish on my head. <laughs> it's only pastors that we understand this. You'll be ministering, ministering, things will be happening. At some point, anointing will finish. And I can tell you because I'm on the field. I have received mercy from God to, to preach in many places. It's God's mercy. To preach in many places. In this Nigeria, I've preached in, in all parts of I've preached in the west, in the north, in the east, northeast, northwest, north central, not everything know how to bring your own atmosphere you cannot depend on people you are depending on people that is depending that God will use you you see there is problem 
If you have me, say amen. amen. After this morning session, some of you will go back and you cannot explain what happened to you. You will, you have the last time you prayed for more than 15 minutes is many years ago, but you will pray up to two hours in the name of Jesus. And when you pray, things will begin to happen. Some of you lost your gifts, spiritual gifts. You used to see, you used to hear. Kai. Your dreams and visions are, are clear, but that water has been shot. Now, anything can happen to you, you are not even aware. Something will happen today for you. The Lord will bring eyes out and he will anoint your eyes to see in the name of Jesus. Yes. You better believe what I'm saying because you seem as if I'm teaching and preaching but I'm also prophesying for you and it will happen to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Some of you lost your spiritual gifts. Lost your anointing. Your anointing. Your anointing. Some of them because of your lifestyle, some of them because of your carelessness, some of them because of your indiscipline, laziness, because every anointing has a judgment on it. It is God told the people, don't touch any woman, don't touch a woman, don't touch a woman, and all your life, beautiful women are passing free of charge. <laughs> if you will maintain that covenant you have with God, don't touch a woman. Don't touch a woman. Don't. But you touched. I'm not saying what I think. I'm saying what God is telling me here. So I'm standing. You touched. And because you touched a woman, the thing left. You are now dry like the wilderness. You went and tried what you used to do before. Nothing is happening. You touched a woman. You still have the form. Huh? But the power has left. That the Lord will bring a restoration to you in the name of Jesus. <laughs> when I speak like this, I don't make mistake. Oh. I was trained where you don't make mistake. My father is a major prophet. You don't make mistake. He's such a you don't make mistake. No, no, no. This one I'm I'm speaking now. I'm speaking it in such a way so that it won't hurt you. But as per whether it's correct, hundred percent. Is correct. Is correct. Is correct. Some people are struggling to tame themselves so that they will become effective in their destiny. The answer is prayer and fasting. When you pray and fast, you are you are principled, you are comported. Let me speak a little more and then we pray. I want to pray for two set of people, two or three set of people today. The Bible said in verse 2, there was in a city a judge, look at his credentials, he said, which feared not God, one, neither regarded man, two. What kind of human being is this? Doesn't fear God, doesn't regard man. It's over. That means not even God can even speak to him. He said, and there was a widow. Now look at this woman's credentials because anytime, anytime I teach about this, I use this to show the people the power of prayer because all the disadvantages that can happen to a man happen to this woman. He said, number one, he said he was a widow in that city and she came unto him saying, avenge my adversaries and he would not for a while but afterward he said within himself though I fear not God nor regard man yet because this widow troubled me I will avenge her lest by her continual coming she, she, she weary me and the Lord said here was the unjust judge said and shall not God avenge his own elect which cry day and night unto him, though he be along with them. I tell you, he will avenge them speedily, nevertheless. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on earth. If you check, that word faith there is not pistis. 
the word faith there is patience patience is endurance now it is more like staying power self time is staying power I didn't hear staff time is staying power another word is long suffering another word is endurance your capacity to stay long enough till you see results if you are with me say amen, amen. <laughs> your capacity to stay long enough until you see results so the Bible is saying here that a woman look at how her challenges number one she's a woman and I hope you know in the time of the Bible in the days of Moses they don't even count women that's number one number two she's not just a woman she was a widow number three she is meeting a judge and there is nobody to represent her somebody should be representing her but she's representing herself number three number four it is not just that she's representing herself it is before a judge that doesn't fear any man number five this same judge does not fear even God how bad can he get brothers and sisters how bad can a situation get it is not just that things are wrong in your life you don't even have anybody to speak for you you don't have anybody to run to the people you even told are the people that escalated your problem it is time to take it to Jesus on your knees that's where to take it to him and the Bible said that this woman kept coming she 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 kept coming the man said I don't want to help you but the way you are coming a woman that taught my mother intercession many years ago about 30 years ago told my mother that even if God's hand is like this that you can pray and turn God's hand like this anyway she's teaching her the wrong one but she's still trying to say that you can, prayer can turn things people don't know what is priesthood the universe is governed by priesthood listen to me things don't happen just because God said it things happen because there is a priesthood that ensures that what God says come to pass if not eh, you God can say you will be rich you will die poor God can say you will be a man of God you will die a thief just because God said it doesn't mean somebody have to insist there is always a priesthood gap that ensures that the purposes of God comes to pass it is easy for you to say that Jesus was born of Mary by by incarnation until you find out that Mary and Joseph are not <laughs> Mary and Joseph are not the real parents of Jesus the day Jesus was dedicated his real parents came to the temple and his real parents are the ones that know anything about his life including the mother many times things will happen the mother doesn't know she will just keep quiet because the way this boy is acting is strange meanwhile the mother should know in fact a time came the mother came and told jesus me I, your father is looking for you he said i should be about my father's business they are telling jesus about his father he's saying i will be about my father's business that means he's saying that you should know that this is not my real father It was when Jesus was dedicated Simeon and Anna came to the temple it was at that point we found out that Jesus was giving birth to in the spirit not in the natural hmm? if you don't know how the spirit gives birth nothing will manifest in the natural the realm of the natural is subject to men that have power in the spirit and it takes priesthood for you to concord things in that realm oh my god that is what it means for a man to be a man of faith I doubt a man that says he has faith that don't pray because the reason why we pray and insist on prayer is because our convictions has bound us to the altar of prayer and we cannot stop praying until we see the things that we are convicted of from the word of God manifest in the natural if you stop you didn't have faith but if you kept praying that means you have faith enough to believe God till he begins to manifest and you kept praying kept praying kept praying said when when an 
Hannah's husband died, from the time the husband died, she came to the temple and gave herself to prayer because there is a purpose in the heart of God that needed to be bettered. So she yielded her womb to intercession and prayer. It was when Jesus came, he was teaching us in the book of John chapter 3. He said that which is born of natural is not of the flesh is flesh but that which is born of the spirit is spirit what does he mean it means that the spirit can give birth it is in vain that a spiritual man expects something to manifest here that has not been bettered in the spirit the bible said in the book of genesis chapter 2 from verse 1 to 4 he said these are the generations of the heaven and earth in the day that god created them that word generation is the hebrew word tolida and Tolida is descent, a descent, a descendant. When you hear this is the generations of the heavens and the earth, it means that this is how the earth was generated from the heaven. It means that everything you see on the earth did not originate on earth. There is the reality, the substance of faith is held up in the realm of the spirit. The substance of creation is held up in the realm of the spirit. Are you with me? Priesthood and prayer is what drives things from the realm of the spirit to the realm of the physical. That is what is priesthood. Huh? That is why when you see the herbalist that is in the temple, before you enter there, the spirit that you are a priest unto will teach you how to host his possibilities. That is what is called priesthood. When a man has received the capacities by spirit intelligence to know how to host the possibilities of a spirit, so a man can be a child of God, but he doesn't know the realms, the spiritual intelligence to host the possibilities of God in this realm. So God will be trapped and impotent in a quote. The Holy Ghost will be in prison. Jesus will be in the boat and the boat will be about to capsize. But he's there and he's comfortably sleeping until we activate his possibilities in that context. Ah, so that is what the scripture is saying when a man comes a young man said that he went to I heard a story a young man went to the stream to fetch water suddenly a spirit rose from the water and told the young man go and get alligator pepper eat alligator pepper do this do this do this do this and I will teach you some things he went and did it and then the spirit told him to go and bring something he brought it and he began to tell him how to carve it that when he's able to do it this thing he carved will be able to host his possibilities here i need to tell you that spirits are not native to this earth realm if you have me say amen. amen part of the reason why man has authority is not just the fact that god gave us authority it is not just the authority there is the authority of creation and there is the authority of the new birth the authority of creation is that the heaven of the heaven is God's own, but the earth has he what? Given to the children of men. That means any spirit that operates on earth without the license of a human is illegal. You can arrest the spirit. Yes. This is your creation power. I'm not here talking about your new creation power. This is creation. Adamic power. I'm not talking of Christ. I'm not talking of that power. That one is on a whole new level. That is God dimension. If you are with me, say amen. A spirit operating on earth without license is illegal. Including God himself have to be clothed with flesh so that he can operate on earth. That is what we call incarnation. If you are with me, say amen. The implication of that is if a spirit wants to bring his possibilities here if god wants to intervene in a higher measure what he will do is that he will begin to teach you how to raise an altar for him listen to me let's listen to me an altar is like an airport and i hope you know i traveled <laughs> i recently traveled outside of nigeria so when i traveled i found out that what we call international airports in Nigeria is not international. 
it is not even up to three gates in certain airports that I saw. I said, what is this? You see cargo, cargo planes, they will, they will line up and they will be up to 10 to 15, 20. And they are coming in there. There are some airports in Nigeria that they call international. Airplanes cannot be leaving and coming down at the same time. Because it is the same tarmac. If you are with me, say amen. No? It's the same tarmac that the same tarmac they are coming down on. That's where they are lifting from. And they call it international airport. It's not international. Huh? The problem is that that airport is small and it's trying to host a big cargo. Listen to me. An altar is like an airport. Say after me, an altar. It's like an airport. Let's say it again. An altar. It's like an airport. Your altar can only host the possibilities based on its capacity. If your altar is small, you can't host cargo airplane. It, it will end as a desire. If you tell the airplane to land, where will it land? So dependent on what you want to be ferried from the realm of the spirit here, you have to build a something an ambience consistent with what you want it is means that is what it means to host a spirit host the dimensions host the presence of god host the possibilities of god so many times if god wants you to build a new altar for him are you with me if god wants you to build a new altar for him he will begin to give you new instructions so you notice and you, God will come and tell you, um, do you pray at night? You say no. You say, okay, start praying at night, 30 minutes. Now that 30 minutes is telling you to, it's a new altar that is being built. And the proof, because we don't build like the Old Testament time, the proof is that God will begin to demand, first of all, new instructions and new demands. What did I say? New instructions. I don't have time, I'm rushing it new instructions and new demands will be made on your life once you notice that god has been making new demands on your life then he wants to build a new altar with you sometimes he will tell you to drop that relationship you are inside that relationship you need to drop it because that is the price you need to pay for the new altar that business you are involved in leave it that location leave it Follow me, follow me, and I will make you. Follow me, and I will make you. When you drop it, God will count it as a point of contact. Are you getting the point now? It can be anything. Many times, people will only talk about sacrifice in the context of monetary and financial. No, there are people that money is not sacrifice for them. I hope you know. Me, I have seen it. Where I'm doing ministry people has met me many years ago when i'm not a, many years ago and they told me if i know how to if i know how to pray for businessmen that i will have money on. that time i used to trek from my house to one center of the town and a man came and offered me four million so that i will leave what i'm doing and just be praying for his business Four million is mega money that time. But I knew that for this kind of people, money is not sacrifice for them. There are some people, all they want, somebody met me and said, Pastor, be praying. Our own is not prayer. Our own is to give. You are wrong. You can't find it in the Bible. The Bible said that we are called as a company of priests. That Jesus Christ has made us unto our father kings and priests not not that some are kings some are priests no everyone is king and priest as a matter of fact the power of a throne is traced to his altar it is the priesthood that backs up a throne the most powerful throne in this land is the one that has the strongest priesthood not the one that are you with me oh <laughs> When you want to install a new king in your village, that's when you will know who is really in charge. The chief priest will come out from the woods. You don't see him all the time. Inside the woods, 
if he doesn't come out, he will not install a new king. That means that he is a king maker. His anointing is what installs king. His priesthood is what it takes to push the family forward. Huh? That's the kind of person Satan will fight. Not necessarily the person that has money. The person that has the priesthood is the one that has the power. He's the one that has the throne. God has made you. Jesus has made us unto his father, kings and priests. So some businessmen came and told me, they can't pray, their own is to be given. That's why you are like this. And that is the problem in the body of Christ. People that think that some people are meant to do spiritual things. That is the Old Testament pattern. The New Testament pattern is the original plan of God. God called all the Israelites to that mountain to come and encounter him, not only Moses. But when they came to the mountain, the Bible said, what was happening in that mountain was so strong for them. They told Moses, Oga Moses, go and encounter God and come and tell us. Because they have checked it and they are thinking that the price to follow God is too hard for them. So they sent people to follow God. Whatever you receive, come back. And that is the cause of the rise of false prophets. When men cannot seek out God for themselves. You will receive, revisit your altar. And ask God to bring fire there. My life remained the same. Thank you for adding this volume. Somebody added volume for me. You are... God bless the person. Hi. You will go to heaven. If I go there, I don't see you. I will go and call you. Your life will remain the same until you begin to pray and give yourself to priesthood. I have found out. I have found out. Long one, oh, pray for long. Pray for long until you forget me at the altar. Somebody sang a song. He said, leave me at the altar with my father. Even though the people singing it doesn't mean it. You know, people have sung songs and they are lying. They are lying. People lie a lot in song. Some people will come and say, I, I give my all to God. I give my all to God. I give my all. God will say, drop just drop your phone first. Don't drop all. Drop phone. You say, God, everything but my phone. Everything but my phone. Just drop phone for one week so that you will hear my voice. Not permanently. Some people, the reason why you can't hear God is that your phone is on 24 hours. Off it. Put it off. Not fasting. Just off your phone. Put it off for 24 hours. You will see after one hour, you will think you have died. That dying is a sacrifice for you. Because when I'm talking sacrifice, some people don't know what I'm saying. Sacrifice. There are some people, they can't stay without action, without something happening. So God will tell them, lock yourself inside room and be quiet. Do you know, there are some people that can't stay one place for more than two hours. Yes, so, if you ask them, including that they are fasting, God will tell them, be quiet and fast. They will be quiet there are people that are fasting and busy and they say they are fasting. You are not serious. Ah, there is what is called fasting and busy. You are fasting and cooking. Fasting and sweeping. Fasting and what? You did not wash your clothes throughout the week. That day, you were fasting. You are using clothes washing to pass time. So before you are through with washing clothes, it's already time to end your fasting. You are a wayo person. You are a wayo. God, God has found you out. When you become serious, <laughs> become serious with you you don't know who you are dealing with he's the more tower when God tells you to do something you better obey fast the longer you link the longer you linger in disobedience it is you that is postponing your manifestation and miracle huh? the Bible said that a thousand years is like a day that means that 20 years you are waiting is like nothing to God is that is not even up to half day. So if you tell God, all oh, these 20 years are waiting, you have not done anything. God will say, has has one minute passed? He is an immortal one. He's not, 
he's not disturbed by your lack of sensi sensitivity to the seasons of your life gates and seasons we open and a man will allow it to pass everything does not happen at every time there is what we call kairos season in the spirit these are seasons that god has ordained to do certain things in your life there are things god cannot do in the next 20 years because the people he will use to do it have died he has to do it now it was the psalmist that says satisfy me early oh god satisfy me early with your mercy huh? satisfy if god wants to use you in ministry let him anoint you now let him let him do something to you let the gates of utterance unlock in your system now let the bowels of the prophetic flow out let the god give you the grace to pray and fast why give me the grace to fast when i'm already 80 years old it's not bad but hey an 80 years old woman fasting is endangering her health oh. now that you can fast why not receive grace to fast now that you can pray brutally why not pray now huh? pray now receive grace to break the shackles of Satan. as i'm speaking now some people are already hearing instructions from god god is telling you what to do after this meeting the earlier you do it the better let me tell you something the bible said we have received a kingdom that cannot be moved it means that the standard of god remains sure what god can only do for us is that god will give up can i come down huh okay the only thing that god can do for you <laughs> the only thing that god can do for you is that he will give you grace to yield to the demands of coming to the place of destiny if god said that this is the quota we need to meet up to so that there will be a release of the spirit everyone must meet that quota if you don't if one minute to meeting the quota nothing will happen god told that naman to go and put himself in the water seven times he did it six times if i'm the one I'll, by seven six times he should be healing small is it not true we should be seeing small results on the sixth time nothing happened it was at the seventh one a minute to go you will not see result until the last one and that is why you need to heed god's instruction now oh my god hi somebody came and began to pray and told god visit me visit me visit me visit me and then god opened something for him he said god why not tell me why not show me this man god said i have actually been waiting for you 10 years ago it's just that it is now that your ear has been inclined to hear my instructions there are certain things god is telling there is still time as long as there is life there is time huh? this one month is enough time for you to press into god take out time begin to pray and ask god why not do it now why not do it now give me grace give me grace to pray give me grace to pray why will i wake up to pray in the night and i will sleep off am i the only one that likes sleep why is sleep robbing me of my destiny eh? what is this thing get angry get angry sometimes you even wake up and go and kneel beside the bed are you with me kneel beside the bed and then sleep off sometimes you will kneel beside the bed and sleep will be catching you catching you say bible said i should not give god something that is bad so let me sleep is one now let me sleep small then by two i will start i tried it when i put my head on the bed i woke up by 5 30 in the morning am i the only one it has happened to the way you will know that is satan that is manipulating your destiny is that tomorrow it will happen again try it it will happen the third time happen the if it was not certain why is it happening every day it is called the spirit of slumber sleep and slumber is not exactly the same slumber is a spirit sometimes i will use my hand and hold my eyes my eyelids that's when i found out that this my eyelids is heavier than two bags of cement it will close there is one time i went to the bathroom took my bath as I'm taking my bath, I was still sleeping. There was one time I woke up. They said we should jog. I jogged. I was still sleeping. I said, God, what is happening? I refused to give up. I refused. I refused. 
something has not happened to you that's why you are sleeping like somebody that don't have a purpose if you see how your family has been bound i thought i am a young man but i've seen things i've seen people with potential die huh? i have seen it i've seen certain rot dark things even before anointed people that's when i found out that anointing is not enough you must learn prayer prayer is superior to the anointing uh, let me say it again prayer is superior to the anointing prayer is superior to the anointing that is the problem of many ministers once they are anointing they stop anointed they stop praying what they don't know is that prayer is superior to the anointing because it is prayer and priesthood that generates the unction when you stop it will not be obvious immediately but over a period of time just like an iron that is unplugged from electricity it will be hot for like five to ten minutes is it not true then after some time it will start showing that it has been unplugged hmm. you are Yahweh fasting i finished a three days fast and in that three days fast increase your volume increase your volume i'm about to i finished the three days fast within the three days fast i was called up to a court session in heaven i know some of you don't know that many of your prayers are court session whether you had the encounter or not is court session look at where we read in the book of luke chapter 18 when you are before a judge is it not a court session so many people come before a court session and they lose good cases you know a bad lawyer can lose a good case somebody a lawyer told me that a bad lawyer can lose a good case and a good lawyer can win a bad case huh? so now it is not a matter of how bad your case is it's how competent you are in adjudicating your matter in the spirit on the third day i was called up and they began to discuss and said should we allow this young man to enter here i saw certain people lined up this side lined up this side and they are deciding on my matter <laughs> you are Yahweh. Hey, you are Yahweh. the hand of god will come in your life you are Yahweh. told me but we are not through with the court session i should come back that's when i found out fasting does not end in the three days you gave yourself fasting ends when the end of god has been achieved the same thing with prayer it is not about time it's about god and his agenda so if i pray for one hour and the intent of god for that prayer has not been achieved i have to go back one more time so when i finish god told me the case has not been decided I entered another five days when I entered God told me give me strong reasons why this thing has to happen for you and I began to tell him things huh? when I began to tell him it was after that prayer and fasting they invited me to before that time the highest invitation I've received it was a redemption camp more than 12,000 youths we are gathered I'm an evil man and I know I can tell you for free that I'm not supposed to say it here but let me just say it I can tell you for free that evil men don't have that kind of opportunity talk more of somebody my age I'm about the only person that have had 
that kind of opportunity at that level. Why? After that prayer and encounter, the judgment was made on my favor. And then I had another encounter. I was in my, in the guest place that they kept me. I was praying, praying. Suddenly, we saw a vision. Are you with me? Because I saw a light. And anytime I see this light, I will know that God is bringing deliverance to people. Now, what happened is that I, I came to a gate. This is what happened. If you are, if you are an evil man, once you come to that gate, whether you are good, you are bad, anointed or not, once you come to that gate, they will bounce you back and allow others to pass. Once you come to that gate, irrespective of your competence. When I came to that gate, because a warfare has been won, oh Jesus, something will happen for you today. Some of you, God will give you the grace to war and fight. He will make you a lion in the spirit. You stop crying for Satan. Stop crying for Satan. When he finished, I came to the gate. It was a, like a bank counter. And mighty beings were standing there. And they, they even stopped me from passing. It was when I presented one or two cases and forced myself through that gate. From that day, from that day, the gate of ministry opened to me in everywhere, every walk of life. From north to east, to west, to north, to south, outside, people are calling me from everywhere. It is not because you are the best, it's because something has been solved in the spirit. You can be expecting something, be competent for something, if the gate has not been opened in the spirit, you will be locked out. Can you lift up your hands and pray for two minutes and ask God, let the gates open for me. Let me, let me enter. Open the gates. If I'm you, I'm going to make this prayer strongly. As you pray, angels will mark your faces. The Bible said in the book of Ezekiel chapter 9, verse 2, he said, let the angel with the icon move through the length and breadth of the city and put his mark upon them that groan and sigh for the deliverance of Israel. Oh God, when men begin to pray, begin to put a mark on them, begin to put a mark on them. Holy Ghost, let the gates open. The gates of the new season. The gates of the expectation of the miracle of the works of God. The Lord is about to give you grace, about to bring fire on your altar. Somebody pray! 
something is happening. Sapatapa, Iparatasari, Sepatape, Abratapatapate, Say, Apapatapataka, Atete, Apatapa, Apere. Oh my God, do something now. Do something. Let the gates fly open. I receive prayer power. I receive fire on my altar. I receive praise to put through, to push through. Yes, yes. Two more minutes. Yes, The Lord is unlocking destinies. Destinies of men are unlocked. Destinies of men are unlocked. Destinies of men are unlocked. Can you pray?
about to happen. Angels, take your position. First of all, I want to pray for the women and ladies that is here. If you're a woman, woman and a lady, there is something God wants to do now. Just take that your right hand you lifted before. Put it on your tummy. I want to pray for you now. Two things will happen. Number one. Number one is that God will break certain yokes. And two, God will activate certain ministries in your womb. Are you with me? Are you with me? Are you with me? Are you ready now? If you have done so, please close your eyes. We are going to, you are just going to, if I say one, you just shout five. Let's do it seven times. Are you ready? One! Jesus. It's coming, it's coming, stronger, stronger, stronger. Two! We lose, we activate, we lose in the name of Jesus. We activate, we lose, we activate. We introduce the energy and fire of God. Three! It's coming stronger, stronger to my left. To my right, to the back, my God. Four! Five! Put your hands stronger, Omegos. Put your hands strong. Put your hands stronger. Put your hands stronger. Put your hands stronger. By fire, 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 by fire. Stronger Holy Ghost. Six. Receive it now. Receive it now. Receive it now. It's coming. It's coming strong. It's coming. It's coming strong. It's coming strong. It's coming strong. There are seven of you that will come under the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, you will come under the power. Leave your hand there. Leave your hand there. The Holy Ghost is working. Help me and find the seven Holy Ghost. Help me and find the seven. By your power. To the left. To the right. 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 Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Put your hands. Holy Ghost. Stronger. 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 My God. That's the fire of the Holy Ghost. Fire. Fire, fire, help that sister at the choir star. Fire of the Holy Ghost. Fire, 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 fire. Oh my God, my God. God is doing surgery now. Surgery now. Surgery now. Surgery now. The hand of God is on that sister there. Stronger, stronger, 
stronger, stronger, stronger. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. My God, the hand of God is still moving, it's still moving. Pay attention, don't be distracted. Pay attention, pay attention. I lose you now, my God. I activate your ministries. Let the prophetic intercessory anointing flow from your belly. Let it flow, 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 let it flow. Stronger, stronger, let it flow, let it flow, let it flow. Leave your hand there, sister. Such as I have, I give to you. Prophetic intercessors will rise. God will give you grace and weapon to contend with things now. Father, in the name of Jesus, from the office of my calling. I activate prophetic intercessors here in the name of Jesus. The same anointing that you place upon my life, let it activate. Prayer power. Prayer power. The grace of prayer and intercession. Prophetic intercession. Yes, that's it. That's it. Stronger, 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 stronger. If you are a man, just put your hand on your head. If I say one, you shout Jesus as much as you can. Are we ready? Are we ready? One! Something is happening for the men now. When you go back from this meeting, your life will not be the same. I assure you. Two! Aha! There is somebody here that is under the spell of darkness as we are shouting this name the power of god is going to come on you i feel that anointing Three! the hand of god is coming on you locate them with your power holy ghost locate them with your power locate them Four! Aha. yes Six. Look at them. Look at them. Look at them. Spells are broken. Yokes are burnt up. Limitations are broken. Are broken. Let the light of God descend upon you strongly. Seven. over your lives let the Lord open up a new season to you now in the name of Jesus let the things that were not possible to you before become possible after today in the name of Jesus let the anointing for speed and favor come upon you now the doors that were shut to you before let them begin to open 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 let them begin to open, begin to open. in the name of Jesus I push you up to another level I give you a prophetic push now I give you a prophetic push now you have stayed in this mountain for too long you have stayed at this level for too long I give you a push 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 in the name of Jesus now listen keep all this just read this now I'm going to pray for you the Lord I want you to pray for the next one minute and ask God to give you the grace of prayer. Let him give you a burning altar. Can you pray it? When you pray it, I will pray and the Lord will bring his fire on a few people. Can we pray in the name of Jesus Christ? Ask God for a burning altar. That you are tired of prayerlessness. Help me to pray. I want to pray but I cannot. If you want to pray but you cannot, this prayer is for you. If you are praying and you need to pray more, this prayer is for you. Just say it from the depth of your heart. Jesus. Sobrata bahaka patandi aliatosa sakab. And the penoko prali kataparata hasate. And the commentator. Diria parosa sakate. Brata pakubra. Te katamanata. Ambreta papahadata. Let the burning coast come. 
Let the burning coals come. Let the burning coals come. I bring a witness of the burning altar, O oh God, in this congregation. I bring a witness of the burning altar. Let people pray. Let people pray. Let people pray. Let people pray. Let the burning lamps be lit up in the name of Jesus. Let the altars come on fire. Oh my God. Sapa, Ikapa, Feletos, Kapatania, Ambre, Kopataliante, Japacatilia, Taparantos, Zapate, Katiam, Bereto, Sasamanta, Bragapa, Bragapapalia, Ambre, Kopatapala, Sasante, Zatiata. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Now listen, be quiet. Close your eyes. Let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you to bring the fire of prayer in the life of these ones. Bring the fire of prayer. I bring a witness of that prayer grace in this place. A witness of the burning altar. As I speak now, let that fire begin to come on people. Let it begin to come on people. Let it begin to come. Don't worry, I will pray for you now. No need to say amen. Let it begin to come. Let it begin to come. Let it begin to come all over the place. All over the place. Jesus. 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 Fire. Prayer fire. Prayer fire. Prayer fire. Prayer fire. Prayer fire, prayer fire, prayer fire is coming, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming, stronger, stronger, it's coming. You will begin to feel your heart as if it's burning. You will begin to see, seem as if God is giving you a garment. Your body is burning, your body is shaking, your body is vibrating. That is an impartation of a new grace. Something is happening to you, it's like a weight, a burden in your heart. My God, my God, my God, my God. Put your hands stronger, put your hands stronger, put your hands stronger. Put your hands stronger. Put your hands stronger. Put your hands stronger. Jesus! That grace is coming to this house. People will begin to pray more than they are praying before. They begin to fast and seek God desperately. The sign is that that anointing will come on two people. Then I will come down. Two people. Two people. Two people. Two. Show me a sign, Jesus. Show me a sign. Young and old, male and female. Show me a sign now. Show me a sign. Let the anointing come. Show me a sign. Let the anointing come. Show me a sign. 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 Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Help the pastor. Help the pastor. Sapata kapata kasatas falatasa. One more person. Except I'm not seeing all this all together. One more, one more, one more, one more, one more, one more. Sister, that's fire, 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 that's fire. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. If it's coming from me, it will be too strong. You cannot withstand it. Can't. Mama, thank you. God bless you. Were you blessed? As a matter of fact, come, come, come. Every youth, come back, come, come. Bring the microphone. From the age of 18 to 40, run out here. Please come. Please come. I want that fire to wake up. From the age of 18 to 40, get him a microphone. Let the fire of God hunger to stay in his presence. Come on. Come and receive fire. Come and receive fire. I know he was not free. He's his first time. You might need to keep your Bible somewhere. You might need to keep your Bible. Keep your I want that fire to fall. Join, join your hands together. Right now. Join your hands together. Hurry up. Join your hands together. Join your hands. The fire of God will really fall on you. Hmm? It will really follow See, you. I'm, I'm taking permission from mom. 
leave her hand. No, you come are going forward. too far. Come closer. Come closer. Come closer. Come, come closer. closer. Come, come closer. The people in front stand, but the people at the here. Yeah. Come Hold your hands now. Now listen to me. If I count to three, the people here, the people that I'm coming over to you, you will cl- close your eyes now. Close your eyes. Focus, focus on Jesus. Focus on Jesus. If I count to three, you lift up your hands and breathe in deeply. Then the breath of the Spirit will come upon you. Precious Holy Spirit, blow upon these people like a mighty wind. Are you ready? One. Holy Ghost. That's it. That's it. Fire the Holy Ghost. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming stronger. 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 Holy Ghost. 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 Fire. Touch. 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 your hands and breathe deep as if you are breathing in the atmosphere 
the atmosphere is already charged with the presence and power of God then the Holy Spirit will use that opportunity to touch you are you ready please follow the instruction are you ready close your eyes one is coming two is coming three push 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 holy ghost that's it that's it It's still moving. Holy Ghost. Push. Holy Ghost. Push. Fire of the Holy Ghost. Fire. Fire. It's still moving. 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 Stronger. 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 Touch.